Breaking news tonight in the hunt for NSA leaker Edward Snowden, who has reportedly been holed up in Moscow's airport for a week now. The Associated Press reporting tonight that the plane carrying the Bolivian president from Russia back to Bolivia was rerouted over suspicions that Edward Snowden was on board, presumably being smuggled away to Bolivia to seek asylum. President Evo Morales' plane reportedly landed in Austria within about the last 90 minutes. After the AP reports, France and Portugal refused access to their airspace. Bolivia's foreign minister released a statement denying that Snowden was on board the president's plane. Quote, we don't know who invented this lie. We want to denounce to the international community this injustice with the plane of President Evo Morales. Bolivian officials are now demanding answers from France and Portugal as to why the president's plane was not allowed to cross into their airspace. At this point, the French prime minister's office tells NBC News they have no comment, no confirmation, nor denial on the incident. Joining me now on the phone from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, is Glenn Greenwald, columnist on civil liberties and U.S. national security issues for the Guardian newspaper. Glenn, of course, broke the Edward Snowden story in the Guardian. Glenn, my, my first question is what your reaction is to this kind of uh, remarkable series of events. I have never heard of an example of a plane carrying a head of state being denied access to airspace by other countries that were not in some kind of active hostilities with that nation. It is extraordinary. I mean, the premise of this behavior presumably was that Snowden was on that airplane because Bolivia had decided to take him back to Bolivia to either consider or grant him asylum. Asylum is a centuries-old right in international law, and what this would essentially mean is that Western countries like Portugal and France and presumably working cooperatively with the United States, which is the one that really wants Snowden, no longer recognizes amnesty as a valid concept in international law, and they will actually forcibly prevent other countries from granting it. It's really rogue nation behavior. Well, but, but here's, to play devil's advocate for a moment, right? I mean, you have someone who has been, uh, he has been federally charged. There is a complaint filed. It, is, it cites which parts of U.S. law, and the U.S. has asked countries that they have extradition uh, treaties for him to be extradited to them. This all seems like fairly standard insofar as any country that has a felon that they are seeking who is abroad is going to want to do what they can to make sure that they can get him back into their country so they can bring him to what they see as justice. Yeah, I don't actually agree with that, Chris. I mean, most or many people who are given asylum by Western nations are people who are charged with crime in the country which they're fleeing and from which they're seeking asylum. So if we accepted this premise that any time anybody is charged in a court of law with the country that they're fleeing from, that it means somehow asylum is invalid or that country is within its rights to take any steps it can to prevent that person from obtaining asylum, it would essentially be anarchy. It would be the end of asylum. I mean, it is true that Mr. Snowden has been charged in a federal court, but it's also true that there are lots of people in the United States who say that there's an unjust war on whistleblowers being waged by the Obama administration. Remember that Bradley Manning, the WikiLeaks whistleblower, uh, was found by a formal U.N. investigation to have been subjected to cruel and inhuman treatment while in detention. So there's a serious ground here for an asylum request that Bolivia, under international law, has every right to consider by taking him back to Bolivia and to essentially use the law of the jungle, which is what France and Portugal are doing, by blocking them physically from doing that is really quite an extreme act. Glenn, let me ask you this. There was a statement that was posted on the WikiLeaks page yesterday under the name of Edward Snowden, uh, in which he talked about uh, what he plans to do. We've heard that he's applied to asylum, I believe, in 21 countries, notably not Russia, after Vladimir Putin had made some comment about Snowden shouldn't make things hard for our, uh, our friends in the U.S. When you read that statement, you have talked to Edward Snowden. You spent about as much time with him as anyone that I personally have a connection with or have talked to. There were a lot of people who felt like the syntax and the voice of that statement did not sound even like a native English speaker. And I'm just curious, when you read that statement, what your reaction was to it? I, I, of course, I'm being speculative here because I don't actually know who wrote it or who influenced it. It seemed to me like the core ideas were very much consistent with how Edward Snowden thinks, but that it was sort of flavored with some person who isn't Edward Snowden. If you, I think all the world really knows about him in terms of how he expresses himself is the video, is that, video yeah. that Laura Poitras made um, of, of my interviewing him. Um, and he's very mild-mannered, very soft-spoken, even though his ideas are, are, are very 
emphatic. So the idea that he won't accept asylum in Russia if he's not allowed to continue to leak, the idea that he thinks that the U.S. is being extremely unjust in its treatment of him and, and in pressuring other countries, those are all consistent with his philosophy, but I agree there was sort of a virulent tone to it that didn't strike me as his own, then again, he's in a pretty stressful situation, yeah, I, given that he seems to be in suspended animation well, in an airport. Um, and so who knows what effect that has on someone. And I, I have to say, I mean, I was even reticent uh, last night when the, when the statement was issued to know if it was in fact had anything to do with Edward Snowden because he is in the Moscow transit lounge, as we've been told, and it is well nigh impossible to know through what intermediaries he's communicating or what he is saying because none of us, of course, can confirm that. Glenn Greenwald from The Guardian joining us from Rio de Janeiro. Thank you very much for coming on tonight. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it.